The woods are completely alive. There's a mushroom right here. There's a mushroom right here. There's a, everywhere you go. Halfway between Philadelphia and Baltimore lies the land of fungi. This small region produces over 70% of America's mushrooms. This is Kennett Square. Population 6,701. And every fall, mycelium madness descends on this Pennsylvania hamlet in all of its forms. Welcome to the mushroom capital of the world. I'm Dylan Thuris, reporting for Atlas Obscura, and this is Small Town Big Story. This is Kennett Square during the Mushroom Festival. It's mushrooms here all year round, but on this weekend, 100,000 people come from all over, right here to celebrate everything mushroom. There's a mushroom eating contest. There are mushroom clothing for sale. There's a mushroom cooking competition. If you love mushrooms, this is the greatest place to be in the world right now. Did you have the reishi rose? I had, I had this, I had the berry brain. That's reishi rose, it's made with reishi mushroom, yeah. lemon, and all the rose parts, hips, buds, and petals. Is this your first time at the mushroom festival? This is my second time. This is your second time. So I'm super happy to be back. But how exactly did this small town become a global hub for mushrooms? Well, that's what I'm gonna find out. My name's Peter Gray. I'm an exotic mushroom grower at Phillips Mushroom Farms in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Mushroom farming in the U.S. started in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. It has nothing to do with the weather in the area or the dirt. There was just plenty of raw materials here, and it started here and just took off. Well, that's the thing about mushrooms is we're kind of like the original recyclers. Yeah. Because everything that mushrooms grow on is some kind of agricultural waste. Nice. How many bags like this do you make in a day? 1,200. You make 1,200 so, of these so in a we day? You only got 1,150 to go. Great, I'm on number four, <laughs> so yeah, cool. So I am getting ready, putting all my hygienic gear on here to go into the mushroom grow area where they're actually coming alive. Do you pick them every day then? Yeah, we Is pick that... every day. Grab the cluster. Okay and twist it and pull it off. Oh. Like that. All right. Every single day, these mushrooms double in size. Norm, our cinematographer, is setting up a time lapse right now. And over the three days that we're gonna be here in Kennett Square, these things should just blossom. They should just grow into these mushroom beasts. And so, we'll see. Do you eat mushrooms? Well, of course I eat mushrooms. Okay. Who doesn't eat mushrooms? Who doesn't eat mushrooms? My name is Tina Eller. I'm technical director of Phillips Mushroom Farms in Kennett Square, Pennsylvania. Mushrooms are definitely having a moment. So this was not true 10 or 20 years ago. It was always more of a, like, we can grow mushrooms. How do we get people to eat them? And there is this magical, mystical quality to mushrooms. Like, they're not there one day, and the next day, there they are, in the same place you walked yesterday. And because some mushrooms are deadly, some mushrooms are psychedelic, there is this mystique around mushrooms, but also a visceral fear people have around mushrooms. Now that regulation is catching up with our need, there's a lot of great research being done. I was astounded by the success rate of this very simple, ancient medicine that we've always had, but we're afraid to use. My name is Gail Ferranto, and I'm the president of Bona Foods and Bella Mushroom Farms. About 37 years ago, a group of mushroom industry family farms decided to celebrate mushrooms in September. The events at this mushroom festival that have really you know, picked up a lot of steam and interest over the years is the mushroom eating contest, which is how many breaded mushrooms can you eat in eight minutes? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 2022 Mushroom Festival Eating Competition! <laughs> Dylan Thuras, also known as the Smooth Criminal. I didn't get that. Criminal. Criminal. It's a crater. Daniel. It's a mushroom joke. It's a mushroom. It's smooth criminal. Who thinks we're going to have a new record today? Three, two, one. Here we go. I'm 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's it, hands down, hands down. I think it's not that much food, but it is a lot of food. People were going for it. This one kid had like his whole high school class out there like screaming for him. Hi, my name is Tony D'Amico. I'm Joe D'Amico. We're in Avondale, Pennsylvania, right next to Kennett Square, the, the mushroom capital of the world. We were born and raised in Avondale and we've spent our whole life here. From the day we were born, we're the fourth generation of our family to be in the mushroom business. It's a very tight-knit community. You know, we're competitors, but we're friendly competitors, so we trade mushrooms amongst each other. If, if one person has an order that they need to fill, that they don't have enough mushrooms, typically they'll go to another farm and they'll say, hey, can you help me cover my order? A lot of people always ask us, what's it like working together? How do you work so closely with your brother every day? And we wouldn't have it any other way. I mean, we're best friends. We do everything together. So pretty much the whole growing process takes place in the similar rooms to these. Okay. The room you're looking at now is probably about seven weeks old from when we started. Okay. The, the initial fill of the room. When they select a mushroom, they'll they'll twist it, kind of like this. Okay. The root will pop out like that. Uh huh. They'll take a knife and they'll cut th this bottom root off flush, and then they'll pack it into the packaging. Average harvester is harvesting uh, 60 to 80 pounds in a minute. In a minute? Yep. Sefrina, hello. You do multiple at a time, though. From anywhere from three to four. Oh, can I see? Just real quick how you do it? Just, just to watch, to see how you do it. Man, you move fast. I'm ready. Let's I'm do a competition, try. head to head. I got a head start, too, so <laughs> this is like good. All Let's right. give it a shot. Here we go. Three, two, one, go. Oh my god, it's so much harder. <laughs> oh, <it's> like, you... <laughs> I think one at a time was probably the best advice, actually. I don't think I'm ready for multiples. I think I can do one at a time. There we go. Stop. Stop. <laughs> I'd say we're about even. Well, no, no, sefrino has got a little more, but I started halfway full. <laughs> I did about. Well, so Severino did most of mine, too. Oh, yours are perfect. Thanks. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Mushroom farming is so fast paced. We harvest them, we package them, we ship them the same day. The rule in the industry is you don't fall in love with a mushroom. I'm in love with mushrooms. Yes, I am in love with mushrooms. Yeah. My name is Jane Donahue Henry. I am a long lifetime resident of mushroom country. We lived, breathed, ate mushrooms. My dad always called me his little mushroom princess. <laughs> what was Jane like growing up? Don't get into that. <laughs> you gotta tell us at least one yeah, story. Troublemaker? I was well behaved until one time. But. For the most part, she was good. Jane was a good kid. Thank you. See? My family is so artistic, always did art projects. We would get together on a weeknight and do different crafting things, and, and I developed a love for painting. My favorite thing related to mushroom art, well, it has to be the silent auction painted mushroom event at the Mushroom Festival. It's amazing, I love to see what my artists create, what they come up with, their vision, how they play it out. I love to see the reactions, the joy it brings, and it does bring joy. I can't wait for everybody to see them this weekend. They're so beautiful. All right, are you ready? You get to wear my very special apron. Yeah, all right. I don't so, let anybody wear this. This is pretty hefty, sizable, concrete mushroom. Uh, yeah, this is a no joke, this thing is like... No, it's no joke. <laughs> yeah. Where where should I think about? I've got some ideas, but I... You have to go with whatever pops in your head first. Really? Just go with it. And wine helps the creative yeah, juices that's a... flow. <laughs> well, cheers. 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 Beautiful. Oh, look at that. And then go back once. There you go. I'm gonna need the base coat to dry, so I'm gonna do the like what I think is kind of the okay. face shape first. And I love this turquoise. That's one of my favorites. It's ah, called sea glass. Beautiful. Sea glass. I think All right. you're done. I think I'm done. I think this feels right. It feels. I'm gonna leave this it. part un, uh, undone for the it. moment um, for it. the underside, but it feels about good. 
Okay, what does this mushroom say to me? It's saying, I'm dramatic. It's saying, I'm flowing, I'm galloping through the meadows. Dancing, doing cartwheels maybe. It's delightful, it's whimsical. I love it, A plus. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> I think that pretty well covers it. <laughs> hey, how are you? How are you Thank doing? you for coming. Yeah, I'm excited to check yeah, out all these mushrooms. Sonia B put in a starting bit of 50 bucks. That's yeah. pretty good. I love your work. That's pretty fun. Okay. Someone went a whole different medium here. I love it. So far, I have gotten to do so many different parts of the mushroom experience. But the one thing that I haven't done yet is actually kind of leave civilization behind and go into the mushrooms world, to go into the forest. So I think that is the last thing I need to do to have a kind of complete mushroom experience. Niles, I, uh, I got something. Hey, what is it? I don't, I could be an oyster. Something else. Something else? Okay. Yes. I'm Niles. I'm from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and I'm the foray coordinator for the Eastern Pennsylvania Mushroomers Club. So a typical foray, usually it's late morning, we will all go out into the forest and collect as many mushroom species as we can and then identify them. How do we harvest them? Do you just like twist oh, you, and pull uh, or do you... You use a knife and okay. you kind of cut it off of like a tree trunk or like a shelf mushroom or you want to dig it up out of the ground. You want to look out for a lot of dead logs and branches. Anything that can rot and deteriorate, you want to look for that because that's where mushrooms thrive. What is this? This looks like turkey tails. It's a medicinal, medicinal mushroom okay. and it's more of something you would make a tincture or a pill out of. You can cut these off with a knife or just pull them. There's so many of them that I don't think we're gonna hurt them by taking a couple to identify. Okay. What do you do sort of with uh, what you forage? I'll make medicine out of, let's say, reishi or turkey tails, yeah. just like this, and then distribute it to whoever needs it. People ask for it all the time. When they know you're a mushroom man, they yeah. come for mushrooms. <laughs> you're the one to talk you're to. The, you're the guy. We found some of these when we were out there on our little foray, and they looked similar to a turkey tail. Oh yeah. And so we wanna we wanna just take down notes on the shape, size, is it jagged, is it round, is it oblong, does it look like a beer bottle? What a fun thing to do, to like walk into the woods and find these strange creatures all over the place and then try and solve these like ancient mysteries. puzzles. These mysteries, these fungal mysteries. Yes. Where did they come from? What is this? I've spent the last three days here in Kennett Square and I've gotten to see almost every part of the mushroom industry, the mushroom world here. I've seen how they're grown. I've seen how they're cooked. I've seen the festival where they're celebrated. And Kennett Square is this incredible place that takes all of this stuff that no one else wants, that's trash, and uses it as the soil, as the base, to grow not just mushrooms, but an entire community dedicated to this incredible fungal organism. After three days, we are coming back pretty late at night into the mushroom growing room where we left the camera. Let's see what we got. <laughs> oh boy, it looks pretty good. This looks like it worked. 